If you're anything like me, then sometimes you might find it really hard to concentrate. And sometimes you might also find that you sit down to work and find yourself getting distracted by, well, everything. And one of the ways that I've found that really helps is to use one of these sand timers. The idea is to work with short, focused bursts of time that help you stay motivated, schedule regular breaks and avoid burning yourself out. The only downside is that I've only got two of these sand timers and I don't really fancy filling my desk with all the different time variations that I might want to work for. So, because I love completely over engineering things, I made this. This is a fully digital timer that's made out of 3D printed parts and some basic electronics. It allows me to set the exact amount of time that I want to work for, set the timer and gives a really handy beeping sound once the timer hits zero. In this video, I'm going to walk you through all the stages I went through to get this made, going from the electronics to CAD and then finally 3D printing and assembly. So if you want to have a go at making one of these yourself, feel free to follow along. Let's go through the components we're going to be using for this project. First up, our microcontroller is going to be this Pro Micro board. It's really compact and it has just the right amount of pins for everything we need to connect to it making it ideal for a small project like this. For our display, we're going to be using this 2 inch screen. I've used it in projects in the past, it's got a really nice clear display, so I think it'll be a perfect fit for this project. In order to control the timer, I'm going to be using this rotary encoder. It just makes it really easy and intuitive to use. I'm going to be using this buzzer module to let out a small beeping sound once the time reaches zero. And lastly, to make sure this project doesn't need to be connected to a power supply at all times, we're going to be using this LiPo battery and charging module. With all the components ready, the first step was to get everything set up onto a breadboard and get a working proof of concept. To help me develop the code, I used ChatGPT. I started by telling it what I was trying to make and what components I was using. I started off with a basic sketch that it gave me and then iterated from there. It took a little bit of trial and error, but eventually I got to the point where I was happy with the way it was looking and functioning. Now that we had a working proof of concept in the form of a breadboard, it was time to solder all the components together and translate that into a proper circuit. Now that everything was soldered correctly and the project was working as planned, it was time to design and print an enclosure for everything. The first step in the modelling process was to use my calipers to take really accurate measurements of all the components. And using these measurements I'm able to make replicas of the components within Fusion 360 and then model around those. This part involved a fair bit of trial and error and a few prototype prints just to make sure we get the fitting of the components right. In the end, I was able to bring it all together. And this is what the final design looked like. The overall build consists of three main parts. You've got the front cover which also houses most of the electronics, so in this will go the OLED, the encoder and the buzzer module. And then we've got the back cover. The charging module will be attached to the inside of this. 
and you can see where I've created a little boundary for it to sit in. And lastly, there's a little stand that's going to give the whole project a bit of elevation off the surface that will get screwed into the back plate. And once I was fully happy with the design, it was time for the printers to work their magic. I started off by using my soldering iron to put in some brass inserts into the front cover. This is so that I can screw the back plate onto the front cover using some M3s at the end. The buzzer module snapped nicely into the circular space that I had modelled for it. And then the main display was held in place by M2 nuts and bolts. Similarly, I have fixed the encoder in place using M3 nuts and bolts. And then I used a little bit of hot glue to fix the charging module in place. This is so that when I insert the USB-C cable, it doesn't move. And then the last step was to use some M3 bolts and fix the back plate onto the front cover using the brass inserts from earlier on. And here's the final result guys once everything was put together. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Let's take a closer look at how it works. When I was designing the user interface for this, my goal was to try and make it as simple as possible to use. You turn the knob to adjust the time and once you're happy with your selection, you press the button and the timer will start. Once the timer is going, you can press the button to pause. And if you want to stop and change the time, you simply press down the encoder button for two seconds and then you're able to reset. And there's a port for you to insert a USB-C cable to charge the battery when it runs out. So, I'm hoping this will help boost my concentration, increase my productivity and help me achieve my goals. It's found a place on my desk and I'm looking forward to using it. If you enjoyed this video, then you might also enjoy this video where I make my very own YouTube subscriber counter for my channel. So do go ahead and check that out. As always, I'll leave links to similar projects that I've done in the past and I'll catch you in the next video.